Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Stats All Day with Dr. O'Day. Today we're going to be learning how to run, interpret, and understand, and then also report a repeated measures t-test using Jamovi. So a repeated measures t-test, what we're doing here is we're comparing you to you as the participant. So I as the researcher want to know is the same participant changing from time point one to time point two and how much are my participants changing from time point one to time point two on average so in other words there are two groups or time points but each participant in my study is in both groups so there's two time points and that's how we know that we're running a t-test and because participants are in both groups in other words it's a repeated measure study then we know that we're going to run a repeat of measures t-test. This is oftentimes referred to also as a paired samples t-test or even a dependent samples t-test. Not an independent samples t-test, that's going to be a different style, but oftentimes a paired samples or repeat of measures t-test is also referred to as a dependent samples t-test. So an example here is I might uh, have a class, so I, I teach um, at Union College, and I might have a class in which um, I examine participant scores or my student scores on exam one versus exam two. Generally, students score a little bit higher on exam two. Um, so in this situation, I might be comparing them on exam one to exam two um, and seeing how, how the average student changes from exam one to exam two. Now our hypotheses here, we're going to break this out into the null and alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis in your study is always that there is no difference between those two groups. So in other words, the mean at time point one is equal to the mean at time point two. In other words, if I did the exam study, examining whether my students significantly differed from exam one to exam two, I would say that there is no difference. Time point one or exam one is equal to time point two. Now for the alternative hypothesis, there are a few different ways that we could do this. So I might not predict a direction, and in which case I just want to see do, signif do participants significantly differ from exam one or time point one to exam two or time point two. In which case I would just say that the alternative hypothesis is that time point one is not equal to time point two. However, based on my experience with students in my classes, they typically improve their exam score from time point one to time point two on average. In which case, I would say this third one here, in which case my alternative hypothesis would be that time point one is going to be significantly less than time point two. If I was to run this as just, is there a significant difference, I would run this as a two-tailed test and we'll go over that when we actually go forward and look at running the stat or if I make a specific prediction about whether time point one is going to be less than time point two or if I was running a different study and I predicted that time point one might be greater than time point two I do what's called a one-sided t-test so now if we go actually and look at our data here in Jamovi, so this is a data file that I've been using. Um, this is some data that we collected on attitudes toward COVID-19, and this was done kind of at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we wanted to examine um, a variety of things, um, but in this study, I'm going to focus on a, in a paired samples t-test comparing people's attitudes about whether the government should intervene or whether people should have individual freedom to make their own choices. Now one thing that I'm going to say is before I run this stat, I want you to know that these two things were measured on two different scales. I thought that this would be a timely thing to show how to run a paired samples t-test or a repeat of measures t-test, but ideally if you're going to do that, the two things need to be measured on the same scale. Now these were both measured on a one to nine scale, with one being strongly disagree and nine being strongly agree, so they're interpreted in similar ways. However, the items were completely different for these two. Um, so normally I would not run this actual comparison, but it does make kind of an interesting comparison, a timely comparison here to actually run a repeated measures t-test. And what you're seeing, and each of these rows corresponds to a different participant. So what you're seeing is this is participant two at 
for at time point one which they're reporting individual freedom and their support for individual freedom this is time point two in which they're reporting their support for governmental intervention so I'm going to come up to t-test at the top here and I'm going to click paired samples t-test my first variable is going to be individual freedom so I'm just going to put that into that first little box if you see the little divider here I want to put individual freedom into the first side and governmental intervention into the second side now I'm not going to make specific predictions about the directionality if you did have specific theoretical rationale or maybe a previous study had shown that individual freedom is higher than governmental intervention then you would click this one-sided t-test but I'm gonna do a two-sided t-test we also want to ask for a measure of effect size that's going to give us Cohen's D or the number of standard deviations that those two means are apart from each other we want to know the confidence interval so the um, the 95 percent confidence interval and we're always going to use 95 percent um, at least the vast majority of the time in which we are 95 percent confident that the real mean difference in the population is going to fall somewhere in that interval and then we want to ask for the descriptive statistics this will give us our mean and our standard deviation for that effect so let me come over here now and let's start just with the descriptive statistics so what we're seeing is that participants um, perceptions of and support for individual freedom is rated at a 5.93 on average with a standard deviation of 1.83 and this was a little bit higher than their support for governmental intervention with regard to COVID-19 which had a mean of 4.81 and 2.58 now what you're seeing is that there was 233 participants in each of those two groups and that's because all of our participants were in both of those groups that's why those values are equal now if we actually want to test whether those means are significantly different from one another we have to come up to our t statistic here so we're using students t and the t statistic is 5.20 now t is a all of our effects, um, all of our test statistics, what those are going to measure is it's going to be some level of effect divided by error. Now it's going to change exactly how those are calculated, but the top part of this fraction is just going to be mean one minus mean two, and then that's going to be divided by some measure of pooled error or variability. What we're seeing is that um, the test statistic gave us a value of 5.20. Now what happens here is as our test statistic increases, the p-value is going to simultaneously decrease. And the point at which we say that something is significantly different from something else is when that value crosses 0.05, which is our field agreed upon standard alpha level. So as your T statistic increases, your p-value is going to be simultaneously decreasing. Now typically, the t-values or the t-statistics start to be significant somewhere around um, 2 to 2.5. And so what we're seeing here is that a t-statistic of 5.20, well, that's a fairly large t, so I'm anticipating that this is going to be a significant difference. So there's 232 degrees of freedom. That is your sample size minus one. So again, we had 233 people in this study, resulting in 232 degrees of freedom. Our p-value is less than 0 .001. So this is what some people might call highly significant. I'm just going to refer to it as being significant because this p-value that is telling you um, the the probability of making a type one error given a null uh, given a true null hypothesis for this test statistic is less than 0 0.05. And so we would say that this test statistic or this mean difference is significant is is a significant difference we can also see the 95 percent confidence interval this is saying that we are 95 percent confident that the actual difference between these two means is going to be somewhere between 0.698 and 1.55 we also have Cohen's D which is a standardized effect size which is telling us how many standard deviations one mean is larger than the other so what we would conclude from this Cohen's D is that 
um, participants scores on individual freedom are 0.34 standard deviations higher than their support for governmental intervention. That's a fairly small difference. Um, generally, we start to get a little bit more excited around Cohen's D of about 0.5, but it is a, a moderate, small to moderate difference there. Um, and again, it was significant. So now we can actually look and see whether participants are perceiving this, signif this significant difference um, and how to write that up. So for a results section, what I might say is that participants are more concerned with individual freedoms than governmental intervention with regard to COVID-19. And then I'm going to give my statistics there. So some, some kind of basics and understanding what I'm reporting here is that we always need to remember that we have to give the reader the values that you're comparing. You want to tell them what the mean and the standard deviation for each of those two groups is. We are also then going to give participants the T statistic. And the way that we report this is we have a lowercase italicized T that is butted right up against the parentheses. And in the parentheses, we have our degrees of freedom, which is again N minus one. So there were 233 people in the study. So we have 232 degrees of freedom. Then we give the actual T statistic after the equal sign, so we're saying T with 232 degrees of freedom is equal to 5.20. Then we give um, participants our P value and our D, D, Cohen's D, which are lowercase and italicized. We want to make sure that we take our significance or P value out to three decimal places. And we want to make sure that we have spaces around all of our equal signs. And in addition, I didn't have this on there, but we want to make sure that there's also a comma after this confidence interval. So that's how we're going to run, report, and understand T-statistics. I hope that you learned something. Please let me know if you have any other questions.